Alright. Third time's a charm. Um, I've already said this many times, but because you haven't heard it, um, I'm, since this is your first Shivati view, you don't really know how I do things, so I'm going to kind of explain that. I, I mean, I'm here to help you. I, I want to see you succeed and I want to see you climb, but the only way that you're going to climb is if I tell you what you're doing wrong and you see the impact that you have when you do things so wrong. Um, and I'm going to try to explain that and try to show you why it's bad and how you can fix those certain things. Um, I already went into detail about for an hour last time, so I mean, I'm just going to have to do that again. Um, this time I might be able to add some extra stuff since I, you know, I've already seen it, but um, let's get into it, shall we? Um, starting off, your team comp isn't incredible. There's not a lot that Moira is going to do in this comp that Anna wouldn't. Anna can heal the DPS, uh, also Mercy as well. Uh, I think Anna Mercy would be your best bet here due to uh, being able to, Mercy being able to pocket DPS uh, and being able to heal the tanks as well. Um, and Anna can heal the two tanks and the Mercy can pocket the two DPS and the UB set. But um, this comp is fine for the most part. You have a Moira and a Lucio, so you're pretty much good. So you'll see this a lot during this review, but you are positioned way too far forward. And let me draw it out for you here. I'll, I'll explain where you need to be positioned and why. So you need to be positioned... So if your team's right here behind a Sigma shield, right? So your two tanks are like right here, and then uh, your DPS is going to be flanking, this one's flanking over here, right? Because you have an Ash and a Hanzo, and then well, Lucio's going to be here, and then you're going to be here, right? But let's just say, for the sake of... Why am I using... Why am I not using the paint tool? Okay, so you got a Sigma Shield, right? And then you got the two things, but for the sake of, you know knowing how to play the character. Let's say you got a Reaper and then, you know, a single flanker over here, like a Sombra or a Tracer or whatever, right? And then you got the Lucy and then you got you. The reason you stand back here is so that you can hit everyone with your healing. Right. Um that's not correct. So when you um sorry I'm new I'm new to this whole uh this whole paint thing. So your healing goes through everyone, um, and you can have everybody with your healing, right? And also your let your right click lane range is really long, so that when they're when the enemy team is behind their shield, right? Kind of the same layout here. Your right click is long enough to where. You can use it and still hit people that might be, you know, poking out or whatever, uh, or just the shield itself. So you need to be in a position that so you can heal all of your team at the same time, and you can deal damage. Okay, that's that's kind of what you need to be looking for. That kind of sweet spot position. Right now you're too far forward, so the tanks are getting healing, and you can deal damage, but your back lane sort of just dies because you're not there to heal them. Uh, in this comp, Lucio's not going to heal much. You are the healer. You, your job is to keep everyone alive, no matter what. If anyone dies, it's your fault. So I was telling my Diamond Moyer player um, this earlier today. Um, you, if anyone dies at all for any reason, it's your fault. You need to be keeping track of flankers. You need to be keeping track of snipers. 
basically your job is just like you know big mama moira like just keep everyone alive and make sure that no one dies right You weren't paying attention, you were paying attention to the damage that you were dealing. You weren't paying attention to the person that just died to you, right? That you saw and you could have healed. Now you don't have a DPS, and so the reason you lose this fight is because of you. You are so far pushed up and so focused on killing a Reaper that is being double pocketed by both support. Why is that so fat? Double pocketed by both supports. Uh, Anna and Morsi are both hard pocketing him, and you're sitting here just tickling him with this damage. And instead of looking at the health bars of your team and realizing that you're currently getting dove by a ball, you don't even notice. By the time you turn around, you're dead. And you don't even notice that the Doomfist is sitting literally right there to your right. You don't even notice it. You're, you're tunnel visioning very hard on dealing damage, which is really, really bad if you're going to be playing Moira. You see how you had to turn around there and do a 360 to heal your teammates? By the time you actually did heal them, they were dead. If you were behind everyone, you would have been able to heal them in time. It, you see how you're above everybody and in front of everybody, even though everybody's backed off completely? So if you die here, the entire your entire team has to wait for you. Which you don't, thankfully. But. Again, your fault. Here. So, why the coalescence, right? One teammate just died. You're still- people are still spawning and like trying to get into position. Nobody's in position for this ult. The enemy team is in perfect position to avoid this. And I already did this once, but let's explain this again. Okay, so the second you press ult, you're looking at this, okay? You're looking at a tank that you will deal no damage to, all he's going to do is run away. You will never kill wall, ever, as Moira. Uh, you're a tank that's losing a little bit of health. Uh, their reaper, who's inside this building, uh, their team that all they have to do is poke behind a wall, uh, and two, a full tank, full health teammate, and an almost full health teammate. Uh, basically, no matter where you put your coalescence, it's going to do close to nothing because you have to spread your resources so far. When you want to use coalescence is when everyone's grouped up on both teams. And because you mistimed it when your team wasn't ready, you just wasted it an ultimate completely. That ult did nothing. Your team is dying behind you and you're just looking forward. You also had, I'm pretty sure you had Fado. Maybe you didn't. Your, your whole team is dying behind you and you're just looking forward and they're doing zero damage. 
You had fade here. You had fade and you just watched him kill you. Yeah, you, you faded out of spawn. You didn't have it. I'm like you. When faced with a setback, we must challenge our Your team, your team is still low. There you go. So you're not getting the most out of Moira's kit. Moira's kit thrives on doing multiple things at multiple at at once, right? So you. Okay. What you want to do is you want to spray a little bit. Oh, that was wrong. You want to spray a little bit, which depletes your bar, right? So here's your bar. It's a nice banana. Uh, it depletes your bar a little bit, right? And then you right click a little bit, and then it fills up the bar, right? So you just left click, right click, and alternate a lot. So that you can get the and your healing is over time, right? So all you have to do is tap it, uh, or hold it just for like a little bit and just kind of spray and just kind of, you know, like on everybody. Um, uh, but yeah, all you have to do is um, uh, be alternating your abilities and keeping people alive because you're Moira and you have the highest healing in the game so your one and only job is to keep people alive your not your one and only job you have another job too which is to build coalescence as fast as humanly possible The, the coalescence itself was okay. Um, your team didn't really group up on it, which isn't necessarily your fault. Um, it could have been better timed, for sure. It could have been a little bit later, when everybody was kind of just in this little choke right here. So, here, let's, th let's take a look at that again. This is weird timing too because he just doofs has to jump on your face and he can kill you really fast. Like if you were to kill it, you could, he could kill you right here super easy and cold. And he's not going to, he could. So we're gonna look at how spread this fight is and why you should you should have waited. Right? So, everybody's kind of spread, right? Like, they're kind of doing their own thing. There's a lot happening in the sense that there's a lot of ults going on. And you don't really have a reason to call. You can just heal, right? Like, there's no reason for you to press Q here. You could save it for a little bit longer. Of course, you want to use it every fight, for sure, but there's no reason for you to use it right here. You see how little value you're getting out of this? Like, your Reaper's coming out from. Oh my gosh, dude, it's so thick. Your Reaper's coming back from spawn. Your Ash is full health, and behind you, your Zarya is full health. Uh, Sigma, I guess you're kind of healing him. Uh, 
The only people you're really dealing damage to is maybe Reaper and maybe Doomfist and maybe Healing Chase. Their entire team over here is just sitting and chilling in the choke. This Coalescence is getting almost zero value. The, you want to pos put yourself in a position when you call, right? To where you hit the max amount of enemies possible and the max amount of allies possible because that's where the value comes in, right? It comes in from hitting a lot of people at the same time because it forces them to back up and it forces them to use resources that they don't want to use because your team doesn't have to use any, right? And by resources, I mean abilities, right? So say you're pushing forward uh, without Coalescent, right? You're going to have to use Rhine Shield. You're going to have to use Zarya Bubble, and you're going to have to use the, these resources to get forward. If you're using Coalescence, you'd have to use any of those, but they have to use resources to stop you, right? Does that make if that makes sense. Horrible beat bit chase, by the way. What is that melody? Ten seconds remaining. There was a flaw in my approach. Get into position. I will not make you. It's still fine for the most part, just cleaning up. This was a really good call. However, you're going too far forward with it because um, that's not right. I don't want that. Call itself, right, is really long. Okay. And you only have to hit people with the very the very tip of it right? it doesn't matter how many people are inside of it it doesn't matter where they are inside of it they're going to take the same amount of damage or healing regardless so you want to put yourself in, into a position where your teammates are right here and the enemies are right here and the very last enemy that you want to hit on the back line is at the very tip and the enemies that you want or the allies that you want to be really close to are right here you kind of want that perfect positioning where you, everybody's exactly lined up where you want them. You're gonna have to readjust constantly because of everybody moving, but that's kind of the base. That's kind of the idea. So you see what you're doing right now? You're, you're keeping yourself alive in a fight that's lost. So what's happening right now is everybody is taking their time to spawn, uh, and their spawn, t their spawn timers are ticking down while yours hasn't even started yet. Even though you know that you're going to die, you're staggering yourself. So watch. That's much better. Wait. Everybody's up. Everyone on your team is up, except for you. 
You stag at yourself, and you're forcing your team to wait like 10 or 15 seconds for you. Because instead of just dying, you tried and attempted to get out and failed. So you can see Sigma jump down right here. And yes, it's a dumb decision. Yes, he should not have done that. However, it doesn't matter because he's he's down there regardless. There's nothing you can do to change that. So you need to then help him either, you know, finish what he's doing, get out of the switch, and then he's in. Because one person doing a dumb thing and then five other people helping them do that dumb thing is better than six individual people doing their own thing. Half of them being dumb and half of them maybe might being smart. As long as you have a team plan and you go in as a team, it doesn't really matter where you go or what you do. This will improve your uh, until you get up to like high levels, in which it does matter, but right now what we're trying to focus on is just grouping up as a team and then going in together and then helping the people that maybe aren't the smartest. You had Fade, you just kind of let her kill you. Your whole team's alive, and you just let Anna kill you. They have to wait for you now. They're going to lose this fight because you just decided to die. Instead of just using your abilities. Both DPS died because you weren't there. You're right. Zarya died because you weren't there. And now this fight's over. Do you see how you dying is detrimental to the team? Absolutely detrimental. And now you're dead too. You guys somehow pushed this, I don't remember how. I don't know how you push this. They don't focus the field. They don't focus the field. No one killed the field. <laughs> I guess that works. I remember this. It was pretty heartbreaking. There is one, two people down on their team. This fight is over. There's six people up on your team, two people down on theirs. People are staggering in, just trying to fight. Their ball was dead, actually. He's coming back from spawn. You kill Genji. Reaper dies. There is one Anna on the other side of the cart and a ball that is coming back from spawn. And what you do... You ult. A, uh, you ult the payload. And a 1200 health ball. And you do nothing with this ult. Absolutely nothing. You had such a big advantage because you had it all, and they had nothing. They have nothing, they have no ults. And you know that they don't have ults, because they just use them. So you using ult here means that they, you no longer have an advantage. Your team no longer has the, can push this point without getting into trouble. Now they are going to have the advantage because they're going to have nano and you're not going to have coal. So just by using this, you have completely thrown your team's advantage by yourself, single-handedly. Your team's dying and you have no idea what's happening. I think we're looking for the Doomfist, which is fine. 
but you also need to be focused on your front line. Normally the uh, the main hill's job is to keep the tanks up, but in this comp, and playing Moira, your job is to keep everyone up, including the tanks. You have enough healing to do that. No problem at all. You died again to a Doofus even though you had Fade. When you hear the charging of the fist, just fade. Because like, he's not gonna like just fade into like a room or whatever. Like if if you're over here and then he charges it from over here and you can hear it, then you just like fade into this room or that room or over here. Cause he's not gonna chase you down in there. He's just gonna lose track of you and go for someone else. Even better, if you can bait out the punch with your fate, it's even better, if you can time it correctly. Your whole team's dead, don't go in. Stop. Now you're staggering yourself. There you go. So you see how you had the advantage with Cole, and then all of a sudden you lost it because you used your ultimate and you didn't have it, and they did. You see how that kind of works? That sort of... You, so, basically you're playing tug of war, right? This team gets the advantage, you get the advantage. You know, they'll, they'll pull back, and then you'll pull back, and then, and then you'll pull back, and then they'll pull back, and then all that stuff, right? Th this is based on ult game, right? So, like, they'll ult, and then they'll get the advantage, and they'll pull you this way, right? And then you'll get a bunch of ults, and then you'll pull this way, and then, then you'll, they'll go with you. They'll, you know, they'll. It, it forces them to change their play, right? What you did was you just picked up the rope and just dropped it and just pieced out. That's what you did. Instead of using your advantage and instead of you know grabbing another person to come help you pull, you and your friend just left and just, you know. Here's you. Here's your friend. And you say like, "Hey, you want to get drinks or whatever?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah, sure." And then you both just leave. That's what you did with your coalescents. And then this team's like, "Oh, great. Well, we now have the bigger numbers, so we win." And your team suffers because of it. Same deal with the charging Nymphist. I know it's irritating, and I know it seems like he's unbeatable, but he's not. You just gotta pay attention to that sound. It makes a very obvious sound when he's charging up his punch. And it's obvious like that on purpose. You see how that healing orb did almost nothing? Let's watch that again. Got a damage orb, damage orbs are always good.
Rizma's full health. And then throw a healing orb to, to who? To where? I was gonna go over this now. Uh, I did this last time, but uh, you know, here we go again. Uh, building coalescence. Uh, how do you do it fast, and how do the pros do it so fast? Right, I'm gonna give you the uh, the the one by one here. Uh, number one, throwing damage orbs. That's the wrong color. Uh, throwing damage orbs. Put the minus in there because it's a damage orb. Uh, it it deals three hundred damage, which is a pretty sizable chunk of volt charge. It's not too much, not too little. Um, they also um use their left click a lot, right? Uh, they use their left click um, to heal instead of healing orbs uh, because you can use damage orbs and it, it will build coalescence faster than uh, your healing orbs will. Because if you think about it, right, if you throw a healing orb, throw a healing orb, it has 300 total, passes right through your team, at the end of it, bounces away, has 150 of it left. Right, that's only 150 worth of volt charge. Whereas, if you are throwing damage orbs through a whole team of six, almost every single time, all 300 will be gone. Therefore, you get 300 points worth of volt charge. Does that kind of make sense? Unless your team is getting pushed on, uh, or something similar like that, then you want to throw a healing orb because it will get the maximum value at that point. Right? And then your healing is also over time, so while your healing is going, you can right click. Right? That's not right. You can right Okay, so you, you do this pretty well. You have a really high APM, uh, actions per minute. Old StarCraft term, but you 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 do stuff. You do a lot of things really fast, which is good. I'd like to see that a lot. Um, you throw a lot of worms, then you left click and right click, and you kind of alternate alternate, which is what I like to see a lot. But you could be throwing more damage worms just to build coal faster, right? Uh, that's your goal uh, in a game: is to number one, keep your team alive. Everybody. Everybody alive no matter what. Anybody that dies, it's your fault. And then build coalescence as fast as humanly possible. Because it's a really fast charging ult, and if you get it, you win a fight pretty much. If they don't have anything. Um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to build coal. Could have thrown a healing orb there because we weren't able to heal your team. You might have saved them, probably not. People are dying because you didn't position your coalescence well onto your team. You had it going and they died. You are way too focused on the damaging essence of coalescence. 
If your team is dying, that is way, way, way more important. Not even close. You are so focused on this ball that you will never kill. Let me tell you again. You will never kill him. Ever. He is trying to distract you. That is exactly what he wants. And you are totally falling for it. And while he's distracting you, your team's dying. Two teammates die. You should have died there. Gameplay. I'm just gonna not even bother here. Cause I know you guys lose. Fair is not the pick, by the way, but we don't have time for that. I am going to finish this off and uh, by giving you some things to work on, okay? Um, I'm going to give you two jobs and you are going to do them every single game, and you're going to focus on doing them every single game. Okay, number one. Heal your teammates, okay? I'm gonna give you three things, actually, okay? So healing your teammates. Uh, Moira has, I, I said this before, but she has the highest healing in the game. Like, per second. She easily can keep up an entire team by herself. Easily. So, the question is, how do you do that, right? You have to position yourself correctly. Which is number two. What a huge problem I'm seeing is your positioning. You are constantly doing these weird... 360s where you go to the front, you try to heal the front lane, and you realize, oh, my backline's taking damage. So you turn around and go to the back lane. But then your front lane's taking damage because you're not even. You're turned around. And then your front lane dies. And then you try to heal them, and then you're trying to, you know, pick up the scraps of that fight. And meanwhile, your back lane is dying because they're getting flanked. And you do these weird 360s, and everybody ends up dying. Whereas, if you literally. All you have to do. It's so easy. Okay, you ready for this? So, if your two tanks are up here, right? instead of standing here, you back up 10 feet and stand here. Now you can see everyone. And her healing is long, bro. Like, yeah, like, let's see if I can find an example here. Uh... That was the most perfect. You see that? You see how far that goes? Where'd my pen go? Oh, here it is. That goes all the way from here to here. You see how far that is? Like, if you're standing here, it reaches all the way to almost a cart. That's insane. Right? It's like, you just have to stand behind your teammates and you'll be able to heal them and damage the enemy at the same time. 
All you gotta do is just stand backwards. Sit. Oh, this is right. <laughs> Wrong pen. If your tanks are up here, and your depressor are here, instead of standing here, back up and stand here. You can heal everyone in this nice little cone. You can see everyone in this nice little cone. You can see the entire enemy team in their little cone. You can deal damage to them because your right click is absurdly long. Like, you're going way too far close to the enemy team, which is also allowing you, their Doomfist to pick you off relatively easily. You get picked off almost every fight by Doomfist because you're so far forward that you're not even... You're tunnel visioning so hard on damage. You are trying to do everybody's job at the same time, when really all you have to do is your job. And doing your job allows them to do their job, right? Um, so, let me give you an example here, right? So, say Reaper and Sigma are pushing forward. Reaper, Sigma, and Zarya, which you had, right? So say they're pushing forward, they get low. They have to back off. Because if they don't, they're going to die, correct? Uh, you can change that. You can heal them while they're going in, which forces them to back up and forces your team to, or allows your team to take space, right? Space being like an, uh, an area that you want to uh, deny from the enemy team, right? So, like, you take that area, you take that space, uh, and your healing allows them to do that. If you aren't healing them and they end up getting low, they have to back off. If they end up dying, it's even worse, right? So you doing your job allows your team to do their job, right? Just you existing and putting out the healing that you do is all that you need to do, right? But you have to make sure that you're doing your job. You have to make sure that you're keeping your teammates up. Um, and when you keep your teammates up, and when you throw damage orbs, and when you position correctly, you build coal really fast. Okay, so we already went over building coal, but there's another um, another layer to call us and try. It's it's when to use it. Okay. So using Colossus is the first thing you can do. Um, when I say defensible, right, I'm talking about Lucio and I'm talking about Zenyatta. Okay, it's an ult that counters another ult, right? You can use her. Um, you can use Moira's ult as a pseudo defensible. It's not as good, but it does do a lot of healing. Um, if you left click orb and then Colossus, it gets a lot of healing over time. And you should be able to last through like a grab or a shatter or whatever, and it'll it'll help you sort of sustain through that. And I'm gonna do this straight up one from one to three. Okay, one to two. Here we go. Uh, engage. I went over this earlier, talking about uh, how you have to use resources to push forward, but if you use coal, you don't have to, right? If you use coal, that's the the worst G I've ever seen in my life. Let's try that again. There we go. So you can use it to, uh, if, the, if the enemy has taken space, right, they're on defense, they can take whatever position they want to take, right? They're, they've taken their position, they're holding it, it's really hard for you to push past because your shield's taking so much damage, everybody's taking so much damage. You can cull, right? And you force them to move because they're going to take a ton of damage while healing your team so they can't deal damage to your team, right? So it's one of the best engage ultimates in the game. It's one of the best ultimates for taking space, for sure. Um, and it charges really fast, like really, really fast. Um, last one is just to uh, continue a fight. That's, that's not how you spell continue. There we go. So when I say continue a fight, I'm talking about like your team's sort of taking a lot of damage, they're dying, they're 
you know, they're um, now the team has ultimates. They're just kind of scrapping it out, you know, hold left click, all that, all that good stuff. What you can do is you can use coalescence to sort of keep everyone up and maybe allow your team to deal enough damage to get an ultimate. You want to deny their ultimate, right? Those are all great uses of coalescence. Um, those are the three things that I want you to work on. I want you to uh, look at your positioning. Okay. We're going to go over them in depth one more time. Okay. Healing your teammates is pretty self-explanatory. If anyone dies ever, it is your fault. Anyone on your team. That is your fault. You need to keep track of snipers. You need to keep track of flankers. It, that is your job. That is your, your, one of your three, one of your two jobs in a, in a team comp. Okay. Number two, I want you to work on his positioning. Right. We just went over this. You need to put yourself. It, this needs to be constant. You need to be thinking of yourself. Where can I stand to where I can heal my teammates and damage the enemy at the same time? That nice little sweet spot is exactly where you want to be. Okay. You don't want to be too far back to where you can only heal your teammates and no one else. You don't want to be too far forward. So that you're, um, you can't see your teammates, and you have to do that weird 360 that you've been doing the whole time. Okay. Um, and then three, you need to be building coal faster, which basically means you need to be positioned better to heal your teammates in a group, uh, as well as uh, throwing more damage orbs into their team. Uh, going along with the whole orb conversation, um, when you throw orbs, you need to try to throw them against walls, right? Because if it's a damage orb and their team is like sitting here, it'll deal damage to them right here on the way there, and when it comes back, it'll do damage to them again, right? And it'll just it'll it'll it just sort of keeps it there, and it just keeps it being annoying, which is exactly what you want your orbs to be doing. You want to also have your orbs be to nice space. Um, I think that's it. I think I went over everything. So work on this for next time. Send another VOD. I might do it, somebody else might. And there you go.